looks like it's time for more of Carp and Crackity. Wow, it even lined up the right way. This time, uh, we're hopping in a dry... Yo, it's Dry Reaver with a Starburst spawn. Oh, I miss these. The Crater spawns, guys. Remember these? Wow, how long has it been since I've actually seen one of these? I mean, I'm just... Uh, I'm amazed by simple things, obviously. But, like, it's been a very long time since I last remember seeing these spawn on a map. It used to be quite a frequent thing. Um, it doesn't affect gameplay, by the way. Like, it can affect vision a bit, if I'm not mistaken. But not too much, because I don't think it's steep enough to really screw over vision of most units. And, of course, we are on AoE 2, so you don't get extra damage from the high ground. But let's focus on AoE 4 things instead, because we've got Berry Madness here. Abbasids versus Delhi. Two sieves that got heavily buffed. Delhi's ones were maybe a little bit less apparent. There were changes to their timings, but they came out, in my opinion, better, not worse from the recent patch. The Abbasas most definitely got boosted up to ridiculous degrees. Now, one build that is accessible in the Trade Wing build, probably not going to be seen here because something that is happening very frequently with Dry Arabia at the moment, I would say it's like 70% of the games, if not more, that I've seen. Um, the Trade Posts now spawn Central which puts it very close to people's bases, which means that you can't instantly set up a really good trade route unless you want to trade to the other side of the map, which, you know, admittedly, you could try against the Delhi, but I wouldn't recommend it considering their horseman opening is an option. Instead, this is probably going to be one of those games where we see maybe Eco Wing come out. There is the possibility of Culture Wing as well. It depends whether Count wants to play a prolonged feudal or play up into Castle Age quickly. Now, there are some advantages going Castle Age for Camel dominance up against the Delhi. Especially if you think that the Delhi player is not going to threaten Sacred Sites early on. But I think if you're considering that the Delhi player probably wants to sit at home, maybe rush Castle Age, because with the nerfs around healing, most Delhi players are now targeting Castle Age, especially with the buffs to Compound the Defender. I think your biggest edge here as an Abbasid player is to actually go all in with Feudal. Play double TC, don't do more than two to begin with, and just pressure. Prevent your opponent from easily gathering resources, and all of a sudden he has to start playing Feudal. And Feudal is weaker for the Delhi now, folks. Like, the Delhi was the hardest hit by a significant change around combat flow, should we call it, which is the healing. They nerfed the healing. It used to be that whenever you're healing, you know, by default, whenever you're healing a monk, a scholar, whatever they are, they'll heal a unit eight health every second. But with the new patch, now, if a unit is tagged as in combat, that unit can only be healed at half the rate. That is a substantial nerf to the Delhi's early dominance. It means you have to get a lot more scholars out before you can hit that critical timing of like unkillable, right? And it's another reason why Delhi players will want to play more towards Castle Age because if you get men at arms or knights instead, they have more armor. So what you're doing is you've got more effective HP. You've got damage reduction that means even with the nerf to healing, you're kind of similar to where you were before. People were kind of queried about Dome of Faith. The, the Dome of Faith did get buffed. So the scholars are meant to cost less now. It's quite a bit less, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see a second. But um, it went down to, I think it maybe was... Did, they, did the default value decrease? I can't remember. They did make a change, though. You can see they are going to cost 50% less, but take 50% longer to produce. Um, still 100 gold. Scholars were never 100 gold, though. We'll have a look. 65, there you go. Yeah, they did get buffed. Yeah, they went down to 130. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what I, I was like, I want to say 130, but I didn't want to stick my foot where my mouth was until I was sure for sure. But obviously that means now the Dome of Faith found a 50% off. You only pay 65 gold. Now the trade-off is that you are waiting 45 seconds. If you built a mosque instead, you'd only be waiting 30. I think he's already garrisoning up. Did Dome of Faith act like... That was the other thing, right? They turned it into a mosque, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it was a mosque before. I do love this opening from Crackety, though. Right? Like, you want to just keep pushing scholars. Now, at this type of price, like, it's so affordable. You just want to push them nonstop. So, what does he do? He just builds a second mosque, right? And starts researching over there. It's going to get really fast timings. You may notice that now you can actually garrison five scholars in a mosque compared to the old three. Love that change as well. Actually, no. Screw that change. Delio P. Why did we buff them again? I, I, so many questions on it. 
On the other side, though, we are going to see a culture wing coming out. So it suggests that Kalp is going for a fast castle age build. Remember, the preserva uh, preservation of knowledge technology will discount your age up by 20%. It's not just wheelbarrow and all those type of techs now. It affects everything of that type, which means that these tech ups become 20% cheaper, meaning you're going to save 360 resources when you go for that castle age build up. Well, it's less than that. You have to take the 175 off the 360. So you're saving 195 resources, but still a nice little discount. This is just. I think Crackly is just like it. Hmm. So if Crackly wants to cast Age Rush, he's gonna be at a an disadvantage. I think the problem he's gonna have here is not only is he slow on the gathering, right? Because you've got Golden Age by default, which could come quite quick. Um, on top of that, he's investing in scholars, and even with that 65 gold discount per scholar, it's still you're investing 65 gold each time. Looks like he will be going to stables instead. If he's quick, he can actually punish his backside, but I don't think Kelp has to care. You can see he's already got enough gold, pretty much, and now he just needs to fix it on the food. He's already on the berries, man. He's playing very loose, even set up for a potential TC down the line. But Krakeny has walled in, so he will be able to get his hands at least two of these sacred sites for free. Keep in mind that he's investing villagers to build these walls up, though. That's, that further slows down his timing. In fact, look at the resource comparison here. Now, Crackity will have the edge of being able to build up his tech up, but all that means is they'll probably end up, with this difference between them as it stands, arriving in Castle Age about the same time, but the difference is that Kalp wouldn't have idled, say, 10 of his villages to get there. Kalp, of course, is prepping for that second TC down the line. You can see more people heading out the stone. Would benefit from setting up a rack, so it's... it's you got to kind of finesse this. You can't be too gluttonous about it. Military wing has been clicked, so it's on the way. Yeah, he's just got his hands on fresh food stuffs. Waited until he had the 20% discount. I think that's optimal. I think that's actually okay, especially if you rush towards it. Now, this horseman rushing towards the right location. Now, keep in mind, it's one horseman. So if he commits, he can easily get sniped by all these villagers. Uh, Kalp is playing greed to the maximum here, though. So let's see if he actually goes to the grab. No, he's just going to back away. Interesting choice here. If he's kind of threatening it. But Kalp, like, he doesn't want to stop gathering, right? He knows he's going to need enough food once he arrives on the tech up. A nice swing of the knives there. Heavy damage onto the horseman. Great moves by Kalp. He almost pinches him again. No strikes. Well, that means that the horseman can't do anything. Now, Crackity did go do a good job of getting it away in time. So now he can head it back to base to be healed up by a scholar. Still an absolute nuisance for him the way this is playing out. Still, Sacred Sign now only being captured. I mean, sure, you're going to get that passive goal, but remember what I said about the tech up timings. All Sacred Sites have now been captured, but Cal, tech up's going to be complete in 20 seconds. He's already pumped an archer range and he's going into camel archers. Now, camel archers will dominate the mid map. Definitely will want to have Araxes prepped as well, though. He's going to need a torch unit to get through these palisades if he wants to prevent the Sacred Sites from continuously ticking down. Camel Archer should be enough of a nuisance to keep the horsemen at bay. Until you've got like four or five of them, it's very hard to commit. And even then, you have to find a way of pinching Camel Archers. And Magadai may have got the movement speed nerfed, but Camel somehow didn't. And it's a good military wing. So remember, folks, that means he gets the Camel Riders on the tech up. It's cool to see this because I remember I was fury crafting. This is the one point where you might actually want to um, go for the military wing for the unit spawning alone. Because you get your hands on two Camel Riders. It's going to be pretty impactful considering the Krakeny did commit into Horseman and also in a situation that when he techs up, that means he probably wanted to go Knight. So this forces a pivot. Krakeny, as a result, will have to build all of the different production buildings. It's going to be... Whoa, 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 whoa. Krakeny, whoa, whoa. Time out. What's the... Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. No, 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 no. I didn't expect to see this. I mean, we are in experimentation mode, right? Begin the patch, but... House of Learning. Uh, there might be a lesson to be learned for Krakeny here. You know, House of Learning did get buffed. They added a lot of different unique techs now. But Compound of the Defender, dude. Like, Compound of the Defender is pretty amazing. Ever since they made the tweaks where now Village Fortresses research is faster, um, with the fact that you can 
start researching it via the compound defenders, you get online with your secondary TCs that are castles much quicker now. Combat Defender is just the go-to goated build. Like, it is very hard to argue for House of Learning anymore, especially considering how long the tech up still take. But that's what he's choosing to go for here. And by the way, the, the reason why I think Combat Defender is even better is like, you know, you could argue that you get these increased research speeds because you have more scholars now with the castle age build up. You get that with the Combat Defender as well. You get that advantage there as well because you get your hands on village fortresses. You get your hands on boiling oil much quicker. So still... COD comes out ahead. I mean, if you think the game is going to go Imperial Age, sure, this is better. But do you, you know, even with the buffs to Delhi, do you want to aim to be in Imperial Age? I still think Castle Age is the way to win. Crackety. Lacking troops right now. Building into crossbows. I think Calc tricked him here because Calc has no intent of going into crossbow, uh, into men at arms, rather. <laughs> Oh no, Crackety stuck them on stand ground. They didn't even try to trade. A lot of troops being burnt. Not really much being gained. So far, he hasn't killed a single villager. He will at least spot the Imams moving out. Now, the rough part is because Crackety didn't get any sort of real map control under his belt. He wasn't able to just move out with his tech up and instantly hoover up all the relics, right? He's only actually picked up one and banked it, and he's on his way home with a second. The count might get some decent value here. <laughs> the Imam. Oh, I think he's going to lose him. Yeah, so we'll be taken out. Now, Camel Riders here, I mean, th this is rough. Like, Camel Riders, they don't have any ranged armor, but they have a ridiculous amount of base HP. Count does have to be careful not to throw away the camel archers, but camel riders will win against these crossbows. Might be close. I also don't... I don't know how I feel about what else I'm seeing here. I mean... So Krakadi's now going into the elephants, but the elephants are still counted, sort of, by the camel riders. It's actually a, a double-edged sword sort of counter, right? Because the war elephants get bonus damage against cavalry, but these... Camel Riders also get bonus damage against Cavalry. I would give a slight edge to the Delhi though, because remember, the Camel Unis only impacts horse-based Cavalry, which means that you're not actually taking away 20% of what is a heavy-hitting unit's damage. Problem I do still see, however, is War Elephants move substantially slower than Camel Riders, so choosing a fight is very difficult for Crackety. Count. Looks like we are now getting into the triple TC on a delay. I like this build a lot better. This gave him some presence, some threat, and it forced Crackety to react. Now he can see that his ceiling is much higher than Crackety's. Crackety guarantees that with some of the, these kind of building prioritizations. Now, in theory, House of Learning is better for that later timing, but because he's playing against a TC booming sieve, and he hasn't even built a single keep yet to get into village fortresses, I put Crackety heavily behind on this game the longer it goes. In fact, if anything, Crackety should look to secure that sacred on the north side again, start the countdown, and just start to press into the base of Cal. Cal, who is actually escalating his military defense force. It's very difficult to dive this many TCs. Now, the War Elephant will be fine, but everything else will get shredded. And Cal is playing a, a dangerous game out of these pocket ecos as well. He's getting away with it so far. Look out. No, 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 no. It, it wouldn't happen, right, guys? Guys, it wouldn't happen. There's no way, would, there's no possible way it happen. Like, when do Delhi players ever want a wall, right? This is not a salami game. Let's, just, let's move on. It was never going to happen. Crackety just wants his greed. Speaking of greedy, this comp is really greedy from Carp as well. It's not fast to build and it's expensive. Remember, these units take 35 seconds and cost 240 resources each. So still, and, until you actually scale your military production lines, it's very slow to bulk up. Slow pace could be the death of you in a lot of ways. Nice snipe round on the tower for though. Great pinch coming in. That's a heavy cost to Crackety. And they may have actually buffed the cost on your melee elephants. But as you can see, tower elephants are still an arm and a leg here. A thousand compared to the 750 of the war elephant. Great choice there as well. I mean, Cap, he can't take the main army on, but doing that, do it like once or twice more, Cracky's in trouble. 
By the way, the capture rage bug has been fixed. I even just double checked that to make sure. I remember on the main server, rather on the previous patch, these elephant pop caps were not correct. It would actually be like one elephant would show us free here, but you are seeing this right. Crackety does have double tower elephant and double war elephant here. I'm be getting a third soon. Cow, looking to raid, but <laughs> you can see how much of a pain in the ass this is. Oh my god, these houses are actually tilting. 1125 HP and it fires arrows. <laughs> oh, it's more tilting than when you send a knight in and a Chinese player just garrisons the villagers. I mean, at least in that situation, the villagers aren't firing back, but... Now look at the the, the burst side of this is that Cal isn't at home with half of his army. And Crackley, he wants to go. He sees the opportunity. Understandably so. Won't take long to get through the walls either. Problem is, this is the main TC that he's approaching from. Behind this, there are three additional TCs. Kalp is being a greedy boy. I think he knows. He has to go farm soon, so he wants to make sure he's got enough villagers gathering wood to guarantee it. Not to mention the fact he needs all this food to be kind of diverted between building villages and building more camels. TC's now being sieged. Elephants basically functioning as rams at this stage. Villagers are going to be pulled to repair, but that's just going to allow them to commit to the dive. Not enough room to protect here. Plenty of Abbasid villagers are about to die. Count finally on his way home with the army. But what do you do with the army now? Die? I, f I think you die. More elephants on the way, but nowhere near just yet. More elephant is going to stand its ground on the front side here. Just body blocking so the tariff and can go to town. Cow, I mean, this is costing him so much. He needs to get on the tower elephants first. The war elephants are just a distraction. And the crossbows behind it make it almost impossible to get in. Cow's just lost everything. This game could be over. Wow. I mean, Crackity, like, he just dead brained crossbows to no end. And the crazy part is, like, crossbows, you know, kind of even numbers will lose to the camel riders. But, folks, there was no way you can get, you could get even numbers, right? Like, compare this. Archery rangers that produce crossbows every eight seconds due to a, a garrison scholar versus 35 seconds per unit on the other side. Remember, camel archers, you can't go for them, right? Like, he, he's got one building to build them. He's going to build everything extra he can get. He needs just camel riders. I mean, this is pretty chalk. I Count won't call it yet because he has still got three TCs worth of production, so he can still build an army. What will feel like nonstop. But if I'm crackety, like, there's a smile on my face. I could not be more content with this game right now. The only thing he needs to do is now pick up the sacred start on the north side, but hold up. <laughs> Count. The sneaky git, he actually ran up here. So that's going to delay the timing. Very important for him. Remember what we said, later this goes, the better he feels. But if he takes another hit like that, I don't think it matters how late this game goes. It will always be in favor of Crackety. Dude, I love this from Crackety as well. Committing a little bit of wood to these houses. It's basically a half price outpost. Actually, it's better than an outpost, right? This is a quarter price outpost. And the reason it's a quarter price outpost is because an outpost can only get five people in safely. These hold 10. And they have more health than an outpost. I'm so happy we get to see this tech on, uh, underway. It's pretty cool. Wait, did I read that wrong? Oh, no, ignore me. It's the same as a normal outpost. It's only five. I'm, I'm blabbering out my, 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 my butthole here. It's still half price, though. And you need more housing, right? Like, you're eventually going to need to get the pop cap. Outpost by comparison, you know, unless you want to commit stone to fortify them, don't last as long as these houses do. It's pretty crazy. House posts. Could go with house posts. Kind of have the same ring to it. Actually, kind of sounds more like Gao at that point. Oh, no. Cow, buddy, we need to talk. Manganels is, is... No, it's not the play. He has no way of protecting it. Folks, Manganels don't even tank Tower Elephant fire that well. Tower Elephants will still have 11 damage going through. Oh, boy. See, he's trying to focus fire on it. Mango shot's coming out, but nice dodge there by Crackety. He's baiting his opponent. And finally, we are going to see Spears adding into the mix, but this is incredibly delayed. 
Mangoes in the meantime targeting the wrong thing. Tarleton's are going to commit with conviction into the choke points. Yo, Bean cracking his mind right now. He's dropped four Raxes. Should my elephants go in? Divai, go in. Just go in. Kill the villagers instead. He's even managed to ram onto the, the Maganel here. The villager pinch. I, do you want to do this? This is a lot of villagers dying. The mangoes kind of make it worth, but but the, there's too many elephants. Oh, cow. Not like this. It's so big brain, but it's too big brain. Like your brain is so big that your skull has now fractured and you've got brain splattered all over the room. Which is why he's dead. Oh boy, Cal, poor guy. Camels once again, just proving to be the bane of an Abbasid player's existence. You know, I like the idea of a few camels in here. I like the idea of them as a raiding unit. Also a pinching unit. I loved it when he was able to catch one of those telephones out. But camels on their own. Oh, it's the age-long question that was answered an age ago. Just don't do it. It's so expensive and it's so slow. 35 seconds to build that army up. It's grim tidings. You know, you have to think of these camels the same way you would as knights because it's the same kind of logic there. 240 resources in 35 seconds. So what you want to be doing with them, you don't want to be taking a direct fight. You want to be chipping away at reinforcements and raiding your opponent's base. If you ever have to commit to a full-on fight, they're going to come out behind unless you've got another unit in the mix. And the problem for Kalp here is he had no room for that, right? There's no horsemen coming in. There's no... You know, there's no men at arms, spearmen, crossbows. I actually think horsemen would have worked really well. Like, yeah, he's up against spears, but the camel archers can kind of handle that. And there was a lack of spearmen coming out from Crackety. Like, if you actually commit to horsemen or even the Maganel maybe a little bit earlier, I think this game gets a lot more dice for Crackety because breaching that TC line becomes much more difficult. Also, horsemen are another unit that are going to counter the Tarifants fantastically well. And because they're so fast, you can easily just dodge away from the War Elephants when they arrive. But great read by Crackety there. House of Learning, definitely an interesting choice. Is it going to be meta? Let me know what you think. Ah, interesting. So a little bit of clarification from Crackety. Thank you for that. So apparently they were playing and he asked, are we playing GL2 rules? And he said, yes, and that's why he went for the House of Learning. 